All right, so good evening. Good evening. Welcome back to JPC Spiritual Talk, Chair Campbell. So this evening, Acts chapter, Acts chapter 10. So we're going to get back to our Acts study here in the evening. This evening, we're going to talk about Cornelius' vision, Peter's vision. Peter preaches to the Gentiles. And we're also going to talk about the Gentile Pentecost, right? Without further ado, before we get into this evening study, we're we'll start out by asking the Lord in a prayer. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to ask the Lord. We're going to ask the Lord to shine to our hearts, our loving Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge, and open up the eyes of our mind that we may understand your teachings in Scripture. Help us to apply what we learn, so after having conquered sinful desires, we may pursue a spiritual way of life, thanking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. You, Christ, our God, you are light, and to you we give glory. Father, Son. Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Let's age us. Amen. For it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Again, again, my mother, brothers, and sisters are those who hear the word of God and do it. Good evening. Welcome back. So great is his faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing. The flesh is weak. Keep asking. Keep seeking. Keep knocking. Christ is in our midst. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. My pleasure to bring you all God's word. So this evening, Acts chapter 10, we're going to start out by talking about first Cornelius' vision. I'm going to read the first eight verses. Right? We're going to get our screen shared over and get to our reading. Thank you all again for following. Right, so Acts chapter 10. So I'm going to get myself out of the way. Right, so free up me some more room so I can get in here and work and read. All right, so Acts chapter 10. Cornelius sends a delegation. I'm also going to talk about Cornelius' vision in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment, a devout man. And one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in, in a vision, an angel of God coming and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa. And send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. And he is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among who waited on him continually. So when he had explained all these things to them, he sent them to Joppa, and the father, son, spirit so what we see in this chapter right we're seeing a whole new period in church history beginning what was initially composed of jews and then samaritans acts chapter 8 verses 5 to 25 with the conversion of cornelius the church begins this dramatic growth among Gentiles. The verse 2 says, A devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generally to the people and prayed to God always. So Cornelius is a centurion, right? Roman soldier, was with the Italian regiment, was known as a fear of God, was a former, was a formal designation for a Gentile who follow percepts of the Jewish religion. So he followed the percepts, right? So he followed the law, right, of Judaism. So he followed the percepts, right, their works. But he had not become, what, a proselyte, right? What's a proselyte convert? So he hadn't yet become a convert, right? Two things characterize the devotion of Cornelius. He gave alms generously, and he prayed. 
His devotion did not make him a Christian, but his prayers and alms were accepted by God. How do we know verse 4? And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. So his alms. So he gave alms generously and he prayed. You see that devotion in verse 4. And this prepared him for a conversion to Jesus Christ at the preaching of Peter. Even good people in Christ. It's true, right? Even good people in Christ. Let's look at verse 3. Verse 3 says, About the ninth hour of the day he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming and saying to him, Cornelius. So the ninth hour is also 3 p.m. Right? One of the traditional hours of prayer for both Jews and for the early Christians. Does that make sense? So 3 p.m., ninth hour, was one of the traditional hours of, of prayer for both Jews and for the early Christians. Right? These hours of prayer were prayed by both by both prayed by both the Jewish Christians. Peter and verse 9. So these hours were prayed by both by both the Jewish Christians and also by Peter. We haven't got to verse 9, but we'll look at verse 9. It says the next day. So the next day as they went on their journey, he drew near the city. Peter went up to house up to pray about the sixth hour. Right? So they're observing what their hours of prayer. Right? So they're the hours of prayer that are being observed. Right? So Peter and also Gentile Christians. Cornelius here as well was observing what the hours of prayer. This practice continues in Orthodox churches today. Right? So until this day, Orthodox churches, right? They continue in these these hours of prayer, these traditional hours of prayer. Right? Look at verse seven, and it says, "When the angel who spoke to him departed." Cornelius called two of his household servants, a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. We see the obedience of Cornelius. So Cornelius' obedience to God shows the true state of what his heart. For it is those who not only hear, but also do the will of God that are the true believers. Look okay. at Matthew. Right? So Matthew. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Hmm. Another example. Right? Look at Romans. Paul's writings. The Romans. Chapter 2, verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. Another example is from James chapter 1, verse 22. James, chapter 1, verse 22. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. All right, so back to Acts 10. So now we're going to talk about Peter's vision now. We're going to move on to Peter's vision. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And he saw heaven open, an object like a great sheep bound at the four corners, descending to him and led down to earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of earth, wild beasts, creepy things, and birds in the air. And a voice came to him, 
Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I've never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again, again the second time. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times, and the object was taken up to heaven. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, the six hours, 12 noon, right? So he's observing the six hour prayer, which is noon. Okay? So he's observing this at this time. So it's a traditional hour of prayer, right? And then what? This vision comes to him. What we see is resistance in Peter, right? So Peter's resistance, right? What does it show? It's showing difficulty. So Peter's resistance shows difficulty with which the, with which the Jews let go of the law. <laughs> Listen attentively, right? God's commandment here is first a declaration that the old covenant dietary laws are fulfilled and thus no longer are no longer what? In effect, right? It's attentively. More importantly, this vision revealed that the Gentiles who were considered unclean by the Jews are cleansed, cleansed by the blood of Christ and are equal partakers of the kingdom. This vision thus prepared Peter to receive Cornelius, right? Which we'll see in verses 17 through 48. We'll get there. Finally, this also teaches us that God desires to receive everyone to his church, regardless of their heritage, social class, or past sins, for all are one in Christ. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, Peter has a hard time with Gentiles, right? So, he was being shown here by the Lord, right, to put aside the prejudice, right? Because a lot of the Jews didn't like the Gentiles, Right? Just like they didn't like the Samaritans. So here, Lord is showing Peter, he's got to put all that aside. That everyone is welcome into what? The kingdom of heaven. Just not the Jews. Everyone. Right? The heaven is for everyone. Following Christ is for everyone. So what really what this vision is, it's, it, 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 it was more, more than just about dietary loss. Right? A lot of people, when they read this, they, they go strictly onto talking about the dietary laws and things like that. In reality, what this is really, really showing is to drop all prejudices, right? We can't be prejudiced and serve God, right? Do his will. We can't, we can't hate people for their race or even their social class or even their heritage or even for past sins. We're all equal, right? God, that's what is, that's the most important thing that he's teaching. All right, so starting now in verse 17, right? It says, Now while Peter wondered within himself what this vision which had seen meant, behold, the man who had been sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision, the spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, and go down with them doubting nothing for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, yes, I am he whom you seek. For what reasons have you come? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, a just man who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nations of Jews was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and to hear words from you. Then he invited them in and lodged him. On the next day, Peter went away with him, and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. I'm going to keep reading. And following, and the following day, they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshiped him. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as and as he talked with him, he went in and found many who had come together. Then he said to them, You know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with 
or to go to one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Let's keep reading. Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I was sent. I asked then, for what reason have you sent for me? So Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. So we see, once again, talking about the hours of prayer, right? Talking about the ninth hour. A man in bright clothing signifies what? An angel. Let's, let's keep reading. It said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your alms are remembered in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call Simon here, whose surname is Peter, and is lodging in the house of Simon, a tanner by the sea. When he comes, he will speak to you. So I sent to you immediately, and you have done well to come. Now, therefore, we are all present before God to hear all things commanded, commanded you by God. So, so Cornelius and those with him were what? They were eager to hear, right? So they were eager to hear for faith what comes by hearing, right? Romans chapter 10, verse 17. And faithful and devoted people still need to what? Hear the gospel. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, began from Galilee after the baptism which, which John preached. Now God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and, and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him God raised upon, raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is, that it is he who is ordained by God to be judged, be judged of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. So Peter's focus right here, we see, Peter's focus is on the saving work and power of what Jesus Christ, his death, resurrection, and how he fulfilled the word spoken by what the Old Testament prophets. That was right there in verse 43, right? Let's go back to verse 35. So verse 35 said, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. Okay? So justification is not merely a one-time event, right? But it's an ongoing process, right? It's a continual state. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. In addition to faith, two conditions are given here. God accepts whoever fears him and works righteousness. This does not deny just justification by faith, but demonstrates clearly that justification is not by faith alone. James chapter 2, verse 24. Look at verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, with the power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. It was in his humanity. So it was in Jesus' humanity that he was anointed by what the Holy Spirit, for, for Christ possessed the Holy Spirit from all eternity before the incarnation. Note also the core faith in the Trinity. God, the Father, together with his Son, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, are cooperational in the salvation of all mankind, in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's finish up reading. Starting in verse 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of circumcision who believed were astonished. 
as many as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized, but have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the giving of the Holy Spirit was prior to baptism is something the church has not seen before. So the giving of the Holy Spirit prior to baptism is something the church had not seen before. Look at verse 45. And those of circumcision who believe were astonished as many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. This unusual occurrence is a sign that God has accepted the Gentiles and that the baptism is not to be denied to them or to anyone. Right? Let's look at verse 48. It says, And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. To be baptized was of, was, of, was of importance, right? Even after the household of Cornelius had believed and received the Holy Spirit, baptism was still essential. The book of Acts clearly teaches the crucial importance of the great sacraments, baptism, chrismation, or the sacramental reception of the Holy Spirit, the Eucharist, and also ordination from the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. It's beautiful. We're done in Acts chapter 10. Okay. So tomorrow, Acts chapter 11. So to, in Acts chapter 11, we'll talk about the apostles in Jerusalem, and Jerusalem, the Gentile church in Antioch, A to Jewish Christians. We might, we, we might read some of 12, right? Tomorrow we'll see. But just plan on Acts chapter 11. Well, again, for following, moving right along in Acts. All right, so another good section, another good study. Acts chapter 11. Right? So a lot, so Acts chapter 10, so a lot was already going on, right? We see a lot coming together, right? So let's kind of recap, right? We see the Gentiles coming in, right? The Gentiles are coming into the picture, right? So let's recap this. So it started out with Cornelius, right? Then Peter's vision. So Cornelius first had a vision, then Peter had his, right? Then Peter ends up, he preaches to the Gentiles. Gentiles are, are now receiving the Holy Spirit. It's a beautiful thing. It's a very beautiful thing. Book of Acts, it's an awesome book to read. I love reading it. Right? Hope you've all learned a little bit more. Hope you're learning a little more. Right? Book of Acts is a really, really good study. Those of you that are new that come in, I encourage you all to go back in and listen to the very first video of the introduction to Book of Acts. Right, so you, you have an idea what the book of Acts is about. You know, if you need to re-listen to the introduction, the video is there, right? Without further ado, we'll close out in prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord God, he's one of us, your device, your words, illuminate the souls of sinners, the comprehend what we just read. We don't appear simply as here, spiritual worth, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith. Kind of blame his life and conduct without approaching Christ our Lord, your life. To you and your glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. Sages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Who yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, will now and forever. Sages. Amen.
Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, now and forever. And let's say just, amen. We depart in peace in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. With peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. Right? Jared Wesley Campbell, good evening, good night, good afternoon. Whenever and however these messages find you, I love you all so much. Thank you for following. So again, this is JPC, spiritual talk. Never, ever hold back, right? Seek truth. Seek him. Give him your heart. He does the rest, right? Give him your heart. Right? God searches the heart, right? You need to... You, you need to let him heal you, right? Let him heal you. I love you all so much.